So as you all know, Splatoon 3 has been announced for the Nintendo Ditch, and I decided to make a whole video based on it, most specifically giving out fun and really dumb facts given in the announcement trailer. Please remember to take this with a grain of salt, as some of these may be very untrue and might not end up in the final game. Anyways, let's get to it. Splatoon 3 was announced four years after Splatoon 2's announcement, which was announced two years and a half later after Splatoon 1. This game is coming out on Nintendo Switch, which is a big shocker to many people as it was thought to be released on a whole new Nintendo console. Everyone didn't think Splatoon 3 was the last announcement of the Direct, especially when we're greeted by a horizon on the desert landscape until we see some familiar faces. The world is post-apocalyptic due to the Splatocalypse, aka Final Fest. Player customization now features gender-neutral options. Seems like you don't have to pay for the Octo expansion this time around, as you can play as the Octolinks from the start. You can already see all of the new hairstyles outside of the hair selection. Splatoon 2 had 7 skin tones, but now there's 9. Whenever you select an option, there's now a different sound effect. There is now a big selection of eye colors, along with two colors to three colors. There's one eye color option screaming hashtag bisexual rights. The Inkling's eyebrows have been slit. There are four new hairstyle options, each for different species. While Octolings only have two hairstyles on each gender, it's most likely they'll be given a bit more respect in terms of customization. It shows that you can pick whichever hairstyle, regardless of gender. There are more hairstyles on the right, but they seem to be the ones from Splatoon 2, so no worries. There's one additional legwear added onto Splatoon 3, and again, it doesn't matter which gender you pick. The ink appears more shiny when asked if you're satisfied of your creation. This game is reusing the font from the previous game. You're allowed to change your pet small fry's hairstyle. There are seven hairstyles in total. The inkling is holding a new type of weapon, the bow. We know for sure there will be more types coming soon. The small fry is slightly bigger than the inkling's shoes. The Eiffel Tower is upside down because Nintendo has a thing for France. Octoboy would be pleased. The small fry is looking like that one five-year-old you'd see in the Walmart who's trying to find his favorite toy. There isn't a single trace of water at all. This cheeky little booger is looking forward to destroying that inkling's kneecaps. The ink tanks look completely different, now they look like those bags that you would see in a hospital, except they're not covered in blood, but with ink. You get what I mean. The train takes exactly 10 seconds for it to arrive until the screen cuts to black. You can see a city in the background, but then you can also see it from inside the train. Now, both of the characters are on the slowest train in the world because this section of the trailer goes on for 20 seconds. Everyone doesn't care about littering, it seems. The jellyfish is me on weekends, and the big chunky guy is me on weekdays. The new plaza is called Splatsville, in which I think is stupid, like... Come on, Nintendo. It's based off of Hong Kong, an overpopulated city that's filled with really high apartments. There's little bits of vegetation growing on top of the buildings. You can hear the OG Splatoon theme playing in the background. There is what seems to be a building that has an eye for a logo, so it makes me wonder if you could buy new eye colors. The battle lobby is now located on the left-hand side of the plaza, rather than it being dead ahead. The big-headed jellyfish is about to explode because this game is actually happening. If you pay close attention, there is a massive snake dragon statue wearing a crown. This could possibly be related to ranked or league battles. White pig mascot that we don't exactly know its purpose yet. There is a subway that you could potentially go through, although it's hard to see because of the camera. To all the artists out there, get hyped because the mailbox is making a return to Splatoon 3. Can't wait to see all the memes. This video is slowly becoming an analysis video. The logo features non-binary colors. Neat! On the left, there's an Octoling girl giving a smug face for when the logo pops up, reassuring you that you won't need to spend 20 more dollars. Spawn Attack has a rock remix and is most likely the main theme of Splatoon 3. Instead of one spawn pad, the Anklings now spawn through coffee machines in the air. You can choose a place to jump towards, while you can also see where others are jumping to. It's probably just me, but the models look a lot more clean and decent. The stage feature doesn't have a single inch of water, it's all in a desert area. Some weapons from Splatoon 1 are making a return, as someone on the yellow team is holding the E-Leader 3K scope. The Blaster, the 96 Gal, and the Dynamo all have different looks to differentiate themselves from weapons of the same type, as confirmed by Nintendo themselves. There's a ton of new gear to look at, but take a look at this specific inkling. See how it's wearing a Viking helmet along with glasses? Now they could be a 2-in-1, although it'd be weird to add glasses on a Viking helmet. 
so possibly we'd be able to use more than one piece of headgear, although not sure how that would work in the competitive scene. The new bow weapon shoots not one, not two, but three projectiles. When you jump in squid form, you'll be doing this crazy little kraken jump that could be an easier way of substrafing, but heck if I know. After climbing a wall, you can get the upper hand by looking from God's point of view and destroy the enemies below. If you look closely on this shot, you can see beams that look almost like the Stingray. Seems like they'll be making a return as well. Inkzuka is 100% coming back. Bones on the floor. This inkling looks like that one person who's supposedly a pro at golf, but is just a big fan of Tiger Woods. I'm so happy Willy Wonka is finally in Splatoon. Oh, and new Octoling hairstyles. 8-bit glasses. The splatter shot is now purple and yellow. I know you don't care about the Hydra splatterling, so I'll just acknowledge the other new Octoling hairstyle. I did not know Nintendo was sponsored by Bakugan, because this crab forms from a ball. In case it wasn't obvious enough, this game is coming out next year. At the end of the trailer, you could hear sounds that you usually hear when you open Splatoon 2. But it probably doesn't mean anything. There's going to be a Splatoon 3 Direct happening weeks before the game's release in 2022. For now, we gotta wait until we get more info about this game, but if you ever need to get updated, follow Nintendo on Twitter and press that bell button. What? You think I was gonna sell myself out? And that's all the stupidest facts that I got for this video. I never really planned on making this video, to be honest. So, maybe I could have done better with this. But anyways, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. It's crazy how you went through these ridiculous facts that probably don't mean too much in the end. See you all again soon. Stay safe out there, gamers.